begin. Again, I'm Alex Fidelis, the marketing coordinator here at Multicopter Warehouse. We have a few housekeeping guidelines for today's webinar. Everyone starts off muted. If you have any questions, please write them in the chat or question queue. We, do, we will do our best to make sure all questions are answered. Today's webinar is an official launch of the Inspired Flight 800 Tomcat. I'd like to introduce our main speaker for today's webinar, Multicopter Warehouse's National Sales Manager, Thad King. Thank you, Alex. Welcome, everybody, to today's webinar. Uh, we're very excited here, uh, coming to you live from uh, Denver, Colorado, and uh, with our official launch of the IF-800 Tomcat. So we've done some live events uh, um, with some um, pre-production models, but uh, we're now ready to roll. So I can't wait to take you through today's webinar. Uh, again, it is on the 800 Tomcat, our final release in specs. We will be showing some uh, live uh, video of the unit. Uh, we'll go through features and payloads, talk a little bit about uh, um, some other models and uh, touch on the software suite and uh, kind of get everybody ready for uh, start ordering them as soon as the webinar is over. So we'll, we'll talk about a little bit about Multicopter. If you're not familiar with us, we are located in Denver, Colorado. Uh, we are an employee-owned company, and um, we have been um, around. This is now our 10-year anniversary. So uh, it was uh, 2014 when they launched, and uh, Multicopter uh, has been going strong ever since. But uh, we are a drone uh, sales company uh, focusing on enterprise drones. Uh, we handle a lot of brands, Inspired Flight being one of them. A little bit about me. I have over two decades uh, of experience in the geospatial market. I'm pretty new to the drone industry, but I'm an expert in GNSS, total stations, laser scanning, and LIDAR. Um, I have had a lot of experience working with surveyors, engineers, uh, mechanical, electrical, plumbing contractors, general contractors, and now drone pilots. And I've, uh, this job has taken me all over the country and I've been very lucky. Um, some of the most memorable projects I had was did a lot of work out on Allegiant Stadium, the Raiders Stadium in, in Las Vegas, as well as the Sphere, and uh, some other ones with the Meta data, data Center in Fort Worth and the Apple Building in Boston, Massachusetts. So those are just some of the hundreds of projects I've been on over the last 24 years. I would like to introduce our guest speaker for today, um, directly from Inspired Flight. And that is uh, Adam Bilms. He is the uh, Director of Business Development and co-founder of Inspired Flight. Welcome, Adam. I appreciate it, Thad. And thanks, Alex, for setting this up. Um, really excited to kind of talk more about the IF800 with you guys today. Um, Multicopter has just been an, an exceptional partner kind of through the initial bring up uh, of the product. And really, as we are now shipping uh, full production units and really excited to get them out to the market with the help of folks like you. A little bit about myself, um, as Pat said, I was one of the co-founders of Inspired Flight. Um, really kind of through my career, I've worn a number of different hats, but my primary focus is on leading kind of partnerships and the integrations roadmap uh, for Inspired Flight. So kind of a focus on what capabilities does the market really need and how can we as Inspired Flight go a little bit farther than just being a drone manufacturer in the work with payload partners, uh, software partners to really provide capabilities to the market. Uh, so a little bit about myself. Well, awesome. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the company too? Sure. Yeah, so we got our start in kind of late 2016, early 2017. Uh, initially, we're, we founded as a components manufacturer. A lot of our initial IP was in our motor technology, um, our power distribution technology. The company was really uh, started kind of the genesis of the company was really two parts of the story. On one side, uh, in the mid teen years, uh, when kind of commercial drone applications were really just starting to come online, we were trying to do what back then were considered really unique things like surveying with a drone, like inspections with a drone, and found that we were really struggling um, to find off the shelf equipment that was able to be customized enough to meet those goals. So the flip side of that, uh, kind of putting the engineering hat on, is go build your own drone. And we found that the quality componentry on the market was pretty inferior for what really are aircraft and things that are operating in really critical environments. 
Um, so we started developing our own commercial drone platforms, uh, launched our first full system in 2018. Uh, launch, which was the IF-750. The IF-800 really is the 2.0 uh, to that aircraft. So it's been a kind of a tremendous journey seeing us grow from the IF-750 then into our heavy lift platforms, the IF-1200 and IF-1200A, which have really been our flagship systems over the past couple of years. Um, and now really the launch of the IF-800, which we see as a, a big needle mover for inspired flight in terms of kind of the scale and uh, a number of units we're going to be shipping of this system, but everything we do is under one roof uh, out in California, um, out in San Luis Obispo. Um, yeah, and what our focus really is, like for us as a solutions provider, how we, uh, I feel like in the kind of the nascent stages of the domestic drone industry, it's really important to define what we mean when we say we're going to deliver fully integrated capability to you. So first and foremost, of course, that's all about performance and reliability. We don't get anywhere without the aircraft being the safest, most reliable, most ergonomic, easy to use system on the market. Um, so that's step one for us always. From there, it's really a focus on the user interface and user experience on how can we integrate a payload so that it really just becomes a tool in your workbox for whatever your specific application is, how can this tool help enable that workflow and drive towards some form of actionable data? Um, and that really involves understanding our customers, what type of metadata they need in the imagery, what type of uh, kind of access to specific camera settings, what do they really need in the field to help them do their job? Um, so that kind of speaks right along just with third party partnerships. And then lastly for us, uh, something that's really important as one of the blue UAS manufacturers, but also is just a, our goal to be a mainstay domestic drone manufacturer is a long-term commitment uh, to the products that we sell. Uh, we will really try to go against the grain, um, I think, of what has been almost the standard in the drone industry of a company coming out with a new product each year and then telling its, its existing customers that they have to completely upgrade um, to that new system or, hey, sorry, we're end of life in that system we sold you a year ago. Um, really kind of goes against our ethos, uh, long-term commitment to our customers is extremely important to us. And that's one of the reasons, uh, inspired flight, all of the inspired flight systems, including the IF 800, uh, can be, uh, purchased with up to a three year extended warranty past our standard one year warranty in our system. So I think that just kind of speaks to, uh, the commitment long-term to our products and our, uh, excitement to work with them. Awesome. Well, let's start diving into this so let's start talking about the features and just to note that uh you know we've worked with the uh if team the inspired flight team and uh what a great group of people uh we we really enjoyed doing it it's it's a it's a really give and take um relationship that we've had with them you know when we've we, when we needed stuff or wanted things addressed they've, they've just been right on top of it so can't speak enough about how great that company is and and uh our partnership so but uh Going into the features, uh, the, the the first thing is uh, it's American made, and and uh, I think Adam could talk a little bit more about uh, their journey in that. Yeah, um, I mean, so first and foremost, we are a veteran-owned business as well. Uh, kind of reshoring American manufacturing is just really important to Inspired Flight. It's really one of the guiding principles that enabled us to kind of start the company. Um, one of the things that I don't think we absolutely could have ever seen coming, um, and one of those strokes of luck I think that any entrepreneur needs along the way, um, is back in 2016, 2017, when we decided to start the company, we were probably naive enough uh, to decide to do American manufacturing and create a drone company with a domestic or friendly country uh, supply chain. Um, kind of fast forward four or five years into 2021 when the new geopolitical environments and NDAA language started coming out. Uh, that certainly kind of helped set up Inspired Flight as something that we could lean into and gave us a multiple year head start on some other uh, domestic manufacturers that were popping up. Uh, because the hardest part of what we do as a company at Inspired Flight is absolutely uh, the supply chain, really, and making sure that we can build enough quantity to satisfy the demand out there. Um, so that was definitely one of the things that's really helped us, I think, establish ourselves as a uh, as a player in the domestic industry. 
Yeah, and uh, we also want to talk about uh, the flight time. So 54 minute max flight time. Obviously, that's going to be changing depending on some of the weather conditions, but normal conditions, um, you know, two batteries uh, that are on the unit uh, are going to give it a 54 minute flight time. And, um, you know, there's different combinations for all that. Um, we'll go through and also a, a six and a, a little over a six and a half pound payload max. So why don't you talk about that a little bit too, Adam? Sure. Um, yeah, bottom line is she can carry quite a bit of weight. Uh, three kilograms, 6.6 .6 pounds of payload. Uh, we'll talk about some of the various payloads that we offer. And I know that's going to talk about some of the bigger LIDAR systems that in can integrate it onto the aircraft uh, today. Um, but of course, 54 minutes, right? That's really flight time for comparison's sake. Um, that's with no payload. Uh, so what I think is a little bit uh, more exciting to talk about is with the payload. So for example, that picture that we're looking at right here is the Gremsey Via. That's our EO uh, optical and thermal solution on the IB-100. We're going to get about 41 to 42 minutes of usable flight time uh, with that payload. And by usable, I mean you've got a safe flight reserve uh, on the back end there. Um, so that's what we're pretty excited about. We're, with most of our integrated payloads, anywhere from 40 to 42 minutes. Uh, and then with, especially when you get into the bigger LIDARs and stuff, we're typically seeing 35 to 40 minutes of usable flight time. And then if you're absolutely maxing out the payload capacity on this, we're looking at 30 minutes of flight time, uh, of usable flight time. So pretty excited about, about the efficiencies that we're seeing out of the, uh, the IF-800. Um, and I know you just threw up the, uh, the max speed, uh, yep. thing. If you can get up and move, uh, for a lot of the. I think our construction uh, use cases are surveying our mapping, clearly not the most important unless you're, of course, traveling, let's say you're inspecting transmission towers and needing to get between uh, large spans. It's definitely helpful to be able to go fast. Uh, but I think where that uh, comes into the most play uh, is with kind of the public safety customer that's looking at the IF-800, uh, whether that's for search and rescue, for emergency management, coordination, um, things of that nature. Uh, and then, of course, the kind of the government defense side uh, that we're a little bit involved in with kind of the blue UAS uh, clearance of the aircraft, which we'll talk about today as well. Yep. And then high swappable smart batteries. This is a this is a must on anything. Um, you know, this is this is a we were excited to see that because it's it's funny because we've we've looked at some other drone manufacturers and and they just they're they're not there yet. So um, you know the swappable batteries means that you can land this thing you know pull one battery put your put your new one on pull the other one put it in and uh get back to flying within a you know a 30 second window so it's uh that's all right in pretty neat technology yeah. and 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 we're 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 happy to see that it that it makes it so much easier in your workflow it does i mean downtime is money in this industry. So anything we can do to keep you up in the air, I think is uh, is absolutely critical. Um, and one of my favorite things about the batteries is with just your standard Android or iPhone, um, you can tap your phone to the battery and the, there's a BMS and an NFC chip in each battery. Um, and instantly on your phone, you can see all the, the battery's health history, how many cycles it's been through, um, quite a bit of really cool uh, health tracking and maintenance features as well uh, within the battery. Um, yeah, uh, ingress protection, uh, that's also super important for the IF-800. Bottom line, IP-43 means it can fly in the rain. Um, so we designed to that standard because that's what enables it to fly in the rain and uh, figured anything above that, while there's certainly some, of course, value, it adds money, it adds uh, weight to the aircraft. So, of course, there's a prioritization that goes into that, um, that kind of decision making for us there. But really happy with where we're able to fly this in. Um, I know most of our customers that are operating this system, um, if it's raining, their workflows, their con ops usually aren't going to allow for flight of the aircraft. But I think it's really helpful to know that if it does start raining or if you're a public safety customer and you need to get up and fly, uh, the aircraft isn't going to be what's stopping you. Awesome. Well, let's start looking at the payloads. And uh, the, actually, the unit that we have on, the, on our uh, live unit today is going to be this uh, Centera 65R. Uh, very high resolution uh, precision camera, um, really meant for uh, photogrammetry. And 
I'll tell you, you know, from, from when we got out of the box, it just clips on pretty effortlessly. Uh, there's, you, you hear it click, there's a little tab, you, you pull over and lock it. And uh, it, it actually, uh, for as good a sensor it is, looks kind of small on the unit. So it was, it was, it was a little, little funny this morning when, uh, when I was throwing it on and going, wow, this thing's, this thing's smaller than I thought it was going to be. So, um, but it does do a really good job. It is a terrific camera and uh, we can't wait for, for people to see the results of this. Yeah, they packed, uh, I mean, 65 megapixels with a global shutter packed into that small of a payload. Certainly nothing to scoff about. So I'm really excited about that payload as well um, for our mapping customers. They're loving it. That's where you're getting almost the 42 minutes of flight time uh, due to its size. Um, and I should say, I mean, you're talking about how it clips in and mounts. All four of the launch payloads uh, that we're going to talk about uh, for the iPad, which is the four camera payloads, those are all field swappable. In the field, they all share the exact same uh, uh, kind of mounting structure, um, and you can swap between those payloads uh, with ease. And the aircraft's going to recognize which payloads on board and adjust its user interface um, for that camera. Awesome. And well, the next one is the Gremsley uh, Vio F1. This is your thermal camera. Um, it it's going to uh, integrate also for really for first responders, law enforcement, anybody that wants to do any type of thermal imagery and uh, also another uh, great camera that, that you guys offer. Yeah, certainly public safety. We're also seeing a lot of uh, energy utilities uh, moving towards this camera for inspection of uh, primarily electric assets. Um, so really excited about kind of the versatility of this payload, incredible zoom, radiometric thermal, laser range finder, um, some awesome autonomous tracking features. So really excited about this payload. And this was a new one that launched early this year. Um, so. We're excited to get yeah, the laser to range data. finder on that's pretty impressive too. For for be able to go it's up all, it's, it's, yeah, it's awesome to know where you're looking at, be able to snap, uh, see the laser range finder, immediately pull off uh, the coordinates, the lat long coordinates of where that laser range finder is uh, pointing to. Um, just helps with a ton of different kind of situational awareness uh, aspects. Yep. And then of course our other the other Centera camera is the multispectral camera. Um, this is going to be a, a lot of uh, our agricultural uh, customers uh, for doing uh, crop monitoring, plant health, things like that. But uh, we're also saw, starting to see this in the surveying and mapping and doing multispectral surveying and mapping runs. Uh, it's uh, hmm. this is a, an incredible camera. Um, the uh, again the 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 size of it will surprise you. Uh, it is it is rather a, a, a smaller size payload uh, when you first look at it, but uh, it does a great job. You said so it the best, next, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, there's, that's, there's not, there's not a ton on these to before. say. No. Then you have the Sony, the Sony LR1. This is this is going to be your professional grade camera. This is going to give you, you know, huge zoom capabilities, uh, megapixel full frame sensors. Uh, you know, this is a, you know, basically uh, for anything that you need to get, you know, super high accuracy for photogrammetry. And uh, so some of our ma mapping and survey customers who are doing super accurate missions or need to zoom in uh, super close, this this is the unit that they're going to get. And and again, it uh, it uh, mounts just like you said, it mounts just like the other other ones we were talking about just snaps it. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, this one's just all about versatility. We have customers ordering it and using it for mapping, for basic mapping, um, where it's not going to be as precise as the uh, the Sentara 65R typically. Um, but if you have, if you need interchangeable lenses, right, that's really where this comes into play from a mapping perspective, yep. inspection. Just that versatility is everything. And then uh, switching over to the, some of the other payloads, the one we're uh, extremely excited about is uh, the uh, Phoenix Recon XT. Uh, so we are a, a Phoenix dealer as well. I know they have a great partnership with you guys, but the uh, the XT fits uh, right on. There's a, a, a different mount that, did, that you get that uh, Inspired Flight does um, provide for this. And uh, this is for LiDAR. And uh, I will tell you, it is one of the best LiDAR units I've seen out there. It's small, it's compact, it's their Basically, Phoenix is, um, you know, what they call their economy offering, two to five centimeter accuracy, um, you know, 
software is easy to use and uh you know the the amount and, and it really how, how how it goes through the the um uh foliage and the and the canopy when you get into trees and things like that it, it does a super job we'll keep going yeah. to the next we, slide we've been, with phoenix. we've been working with phoenix for years so great team to work yeah. with and i know folks are always uh super impressed by the quality of uh, not just the data but the ease of use on the software side so then if you want to if you want to go a little bit to their next one then you have the scout plus and again this is uh very similar um in size um actually the same weight a little bit more accurate and uh you can also use this um you know for uh um long range and uh it's got a triple return on this one and uh the uh also through the vegetation it does even better so as as you go up with the phoenix you get more and more uh, ability to uh you know penetrate through things and, and just get more accurate and the last one that we have here on the lidar is going to be the mini ranger three and uh this one's really ex exciting i'm going to let adam talk about a little bit more about this one yeah i mean bottom line this is the biggest uh lidar that can fit onto the iv 800 comfortably um and we're, where we're going to get really like that 35 minutes ish of flight time but i mean you see here 15 millimeter accuracy this is survey grade stuff this is real engineering level um lidar and i guess what's exciting about it for me is uh it's a uh, regal based sensor uh laser um so this is if you're worried about nda compliant american made or austrian made uh kind of requirements uh you're gonna have to pay for it certainly with the mini ranger but it's an incredible amount of capability um and precision in a uh in this payload i mean regal is really kind of the uh the standard bearer for the industry of lidar and everybody knows the quality you're getting from a regal system okay well, now probably the moment that everybody's been waiting for. We're going to go live, so I'm going to stop my uh, my presentation here real quick. If I can find the right button. There we go. And I'm going to turn this around, and we're going to start looking at the unit. So we actually have the unit live here in our conference room. Sorry, bring this around the other way. So, Adam, you can also start going going through some of this, but uh, you know, I will say that from the from the prototypes that we had at, at our live events, um, very well manufactured unit. You know, there there's some differences. The the uh, the uh, housing on it is uh, a lot different than the than the prototype units, and uh, just a one you know craftsmanship. The arms. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, love, I, love, that arm. I, yeah. I love how the arm mechanism works. So we can we can fold this. You're down not necessarily a... showing it very well, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to hold the camera and do this I at know. the same time. So here, let me let me turn my screen so I can I can see what the camera's seeing. There we go. So let me zoom in on that arm lock. So that arm lock, when you pull it, just goes, and you'll hear it click. And then you just turn that to lock it and uh, put out that's, what, that's one of my favorite features. I mean, it's super easy just to kind of break break down and set up the aircraft. And that initial click where it snaps into place, that actually is a safe configuration to fly in. Of course, part of our pre-flight check is to kind of finish the lock and make sure the orange lines line up with each other. Um, but it, everything about the design of this aircraft was really to make it as simple to operate as possible, really uh, understanding that there's a workflow at the end of the day, you're out there to get the data. The drone is really there to enable that. So how can we make something as simple to use, slide in, lock batteries, easy arm mechanism, a case design that holds uh, the payload, regardless of the four that it is, hold your batteries. Um, we have two cameras on board uh, as standard. You have an FPV camera as well as your main gimbaled sensor. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited about how this uh, system's come come together. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show real quick that how how easy it is to unlock that. But uh, over here, you just have a little clip, and that 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 pops off right there. 
And then on the other side, you just push and the payload pops off. It's that simple. And then when, you know, again, this configuration of it is, you just push that in until it clicks. You hear it click. And that's how you fast go. you can swap a payload. And I'm gonna reach around here and, and uh, turn the unit on real quick. Maybe not, but come around from this side. Oh, my camera's getting caught, there we go. See the power button right here? We got lights. And you can see on the hot swappable batteries too, as soon as this goes through its check, you can see that uh, everything's ready it's swap swappable batteries you just turn that knob battery just then just slides out new battery would slide in slide the other one out lock it when you're ready you know also have a picture of the controller that's probably talking to us right now you can probably hear it I got the controller and everything there. And you can actually see right there in that little thing, the, the front camera showing our, our windows pointing out of our conference room. So, <laughs> but yeah, we were, I'll power this down then. But uh, yeah, yeah, really, really impressed with this unit. Um, when you're talking about setup time, you know, it 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 did not take long to pop out of the box. The legs just pop on and off. And uh, let's see if I can set the camera here. Show you that. Maybe. There we go. There you are. So the legs just have a a push button system here. You just push it, and it slides right out, and then it'll pop back in. So. It makes it super easy. You got to loosen it first, Dad. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Multiple points of uh, so protection. That just comes off. <laughs> yep. And then push yeah, that button. That's the only removable part of the aircraft. Um, in the case you put you, the arms fold in, you put the case in upside uh, the drone in upside down. And the legs yep. go just right on top of the case, so they just pop in, I made, pull it out. I made it look difficult because <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's sitting upright. But uh, yeah, it, it 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 from from opening the case this morning to uh, you know putting the batteries in to getting that on, you were maybe talking five to six minutes max. I mean, and it, and if and that was my first time doing it, so you know once you're comfortable with it, you probably got three minutes and it's it's set up and ready to go and you're you're ready to start a mission so absolutely time to time to start uh, using what you bought it for yep yeah end of the day our goal with this really wasn't to overload anybody with features but to provide just a performance incredibly efficient long flight time uh kind of enterprise uas that's uh can meet a, a number of different applications and just be a good tool in the toolbox while we're maintaining kind of the blue UAS NDA compliance um, American manufacturing aspect. Yeah. So can you see the PowerPoint again, Adam? Just double checking, making sure you yep. can see what I can see. Okay. So there you have the the, the live part of it, and then uh, we're we're going to keep going here. I, I'm going to keep the camera on the unit. And we'll talk about the uh, blue version of this. Uh, not um, it, it is it's gone through uh, and, and been blue listed, but you're looking at probably end of Q3 before this is available. Yes, somewhere in Q3, uh, the the lead times uh, in the supply chain for kind of the specific radio configuration necessary for the official blue list configuration are quite a bit longer. Uh, so we are looking at shipping that. Uh, here in a, I don't know, the next couple of months um, into Q3. But it, like you said, it has gone through the entire Blue UAS process, as has our larger aircraft. I um, mean, you can find the IF800 on the Blue UAS list. 
and then you do have a complete set of uh, a software for for uh, uh, for flight. The you know the elevate uh, the fleet management software, uh, the pilot go, which is your mobile version, and the IGC um, for you know ground control app streamlined for easy flights. Uh, you know it's all pretty well integrated. You know our guys here are, you know, can train our customers on it. It, uh, it if you're a used to other flight sim similar other flight um softwares it's very similar it, it, it's pretty easy especially if it's your first time so um you know it just makes it easy to integrate so very appreciative when when, when we uh when we got our our model here yeah the uh the flight planning application kind of a a custom version of q ground control which is the blue uas accepted open source uh software system Really happy with what our team's done on improving uh, just the usability of that system for the pilot in the field. And then a couple new kind of cloud software offerings and mobile offerings for us, an app on your phone uh, that your pilots can use for automating pre-flight checks, reporting uh, notes on specific aircraft, on specific components, uh, uh, understanding uh, kind of the provenance of that aircraft, who used it last, where it's come from, number of capabilities you can get through that uh, mobile app. And then kind of the desktop app really designed for the fleet manager, manager um, for doing a few things, for tracking uh, kind of maintenance hours, things, issues with aircraft, which are in service, which are out of service. Um, but more, one of the things I'm really excited about <clears throat> on it is a, kind of a pilot authentication capability. Uh, so every uh, pilot, when they go to turn on the aircraft, if their manager, their fleet manager has a, had a UAS operations has kind of dictated so, uh, they they have to type in a pin on the controller uh, to be able to access an armed aircraft. And from there, the aircraft's able to record a log and associate that specific log with who was flying it. Um, so as more and more data, as a fleet has more and more aircraft, you can really understand which of your pilots um, have the fewest incidents, which have which are having any, if any, of course, are to exist. Um, and just get more information and transparency kind of across the organization while using uh, the Inspired Flight aircraft. Yep. Well, and uh, you know that's going to do it for us today. We're we we ran just a little bit over, but that's okay. But we are taking orders for these units now. Um, they are shipping. So if you have any questions or would like more information on the IF eight hundred, please call us. Our phone number is there. Uh, email. Uh, if you know any of our our sales guys, or you've dealt with them before, you have their their emails. You're more, more than welcome to email them. If you've not dealt with uh, Multicopter before, there's our enterprise at multicopterwarehouse.com address. Or if you're in the Denver area, you're more than welcome to visit the showroom uh, here uh, right on South Bel Air Street. We do have monthly webinars uh, each month. Uh, stay tuned. Watch your email for more. Uh, if you did miss this webinar, it will be posted shortly on um, uh, YouTube or on our website. And, uh, you know, again, uh, we're thanks for coming. Adam, thank you so much for uh, agreeing to do this with me. Uh, I think this is a, a great start and uh, we're, 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 we can't wait to start watching these fly off the shelves. I appreciate it, Pat. I can't wait for that either. <laughs> Thanks guys for such a great presentation. Um, I did have a couple of questions that came through. If you guys are ready, uh, is one of the questions is is the IF eight hundred capable of automated flight plans? Let me get my camera back on. Uh, short answer: Yes. Yeah. Full uh, from waypoint mission missions to uh, kind of setting your survey flight grids, depending on what camera you have, um, where your overlaps and things are going to be automatically set corridor scans, orbits, points of interest. Um, yeah, any of the kind of typical autonomy flight planning capabilities that you might expect are gonna be certainly available on IF-800. Perfect, thanks for asking that uh, or answering that. Um, let's see here. What does training and support look like from inspired flight? Uh, yeah, so from our well, side- that's a great course, question. I, I, can, I can take that one. At that that okay. one let, let uh inspired flight has a a, a two-day training program and uh you know we do training here at multicopter as well but if you want inspired flight to do the training uh it's part of one of the packages you can get and uh is in their uh california office you can do it right at their headquarters uh or there are packages where they can come to you 
Perfect. Uh, here, one last question. What is a typical setup workflow with uh, payloads such as a Centera? Yeah, I think Fab did actually. Go ahead, I'll let you know. Yeah, as you can say, I think you did a fairly good job of uh, showing what that would look like on the uh, um, on the aircraft. So everything comes in one box, right? So you pull, pulling out your aircraft, snapping and landing gear, uh, then you're sliding in your payload, letting that boot up. Um, and then from there, just on your mission plan, whether you've done it, pre whether you whether you've previously set up the mission plan, uh, kind of back at the home office or there in the field, making sure your overlaps are correct for your that specific survey, and then uh, they're off and running. Um, the geotag information is being automatically injected into that uh, imagery. So at the end of your flight, um, pulling off that uh, data from the camera via a USB-C cable. Um, and then that's going to be industry agnostic, or sorry, software agnostic uh, kind of industry standard uh, data. Uh, put that into PIX4D, into Bentley, into whatever post-processing software uh, you'd like to use. Cool. All right. I have a question for you, Thad. What's pricing yeah. avail availability look like? Uh, pricing is is ready now. It's always going to depend on the payload that you want to get with it. Um, so you know the uh, the the unit uh, you're gonna you're gonna be typically in the in the low twenties for this unit plus a payload. So um, you know call us. We'll be happy to take you through it and you know get you a quote. Do all that. Um, you know. Even if you wanted the training, you know, from Inspired Flight, we quote all that and do all that right here at Multicopter. Perfect, guys. Well, thanks for getting those questions answered. Well, I think That's that it. will do it. Again, Adam, thank you. And uh, you do, again, call, call us or email us because they are available. So, you know, we can get your order in and uh, they're, they're, they are coming off the production line as we speak. Talk soon, Dad. Thanks again. All right. Thanks, guys.